all right so welcome back everyone for my third tutorial so this one I will show you how you can wiring the programmer to your microcontroller so you need, you will need a few things in order to do this so um, first of all you need breadboard okay so I'm gonna put a picture beside this so you can see so you will need a breadboard a regular breadboard a microcontroller so this one that you can sample it or you can uh, 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 borrow it from the lab and a solid core wire make sure it's solid core not a strain one okay multi color is good and what else wire stripper so wire stripper the one for the small gauge wire resistor so resistor could be anywhere between 4.7 to 10 kilo ohm okay and burn it that way so you can put that in uh, nice and neat diode so this diode will protect your circuit just in case you reverse polarity on the, the, the wiring and the third one will be the capacitor so this capacitor it's for uh, stabilize the voltage okay and last but not least it's a programmer so this is optional you can purchase this or you can use the one in the lab okay so now let's get into it So before we start wiring, let's understand a bit about the wiring diagram, what we plan to do here. Alright, because you have to connect the power supply and the programming uh, uh, line to the microcontroller, so this is your target device. And this target device, it has a 40 pin. So as you observe that it has this the VDD for the positive 5 volt both sides and VS for the ground. And the two terminal here number 39 and 40, this for the programming line. So you look on the programmer side, so you will see six pin. So the sixth one is not used. But one, so one is for the reset line so one have to go to pin one of the microcontroller and you see that the description over here it say master clear and you will see master clear on the pin one and pin number two so this the power so this power will connect to the power rail so i have two rails so it's easy to connect power rail so this one it go positive and it loop back around here and go to the other side it for positive so this way you can keep your circuit organized you don't cross the wire over the uh, microcontroller the same thing as pin 3 so pin 3 it's a ground so the ground go all the way to VSS and another ground go to the VSS at the bottom here okay. pin number 4 this is the programming data so programming data follow that you go to the pin that say PGD so programming data and the other one PGC programming clock which is pin 5 you go to the programming clock PGC of the microcontroller okay so I believe I forget one important piece so on the reset line you need to put your resistor and pull it to the 5 ohm so this is 10 kilo ohm resistor it have to be there so the microcontroller can run by itself okay so this is the wiring diagram and now let's try to connect them on the breadboard so make sure you have a good breadboard okay pull all the component that you don't use and let's start off with this so this one I pretend that this um, pin over here is the mic data programmer the programmer will be plugged in into that so now we have this pin for your our reference so this is pin 1 start from here and go all the way to pin 6 even though pin 6 not used but it's better to leave it there okay and the other end of this cable can be plugged directly to the programmer okay 
so we'll follow the pin one correctly okay so now next you will need the microcontroller so this microcontroller it has 40 pin and it's a bit challenging to count them so I have a small trick here make this and print out the number make sure the pitch is a hundred mil or hundred thou and make sure you stick it on so that way you can identify the pin number much quicker and it's not confused okay tuck it in like that put the tape okay the tape tuck it in both sides so now we can identify the pin number much quicker so let's place it somewhere here you want to leave room on the other side so you have room to add more circuit in the future okay make sure you press it hard make sure it go all the way in okay so now you get microcontroller so first of all I will connect pin 1 you see here so pin 1 to pin 1 of the microcontroller so I will use the solid core wire okay so this way you can make it neat okay, make sure you strip that half it's long enough so you look at it it take about three to four spaces of the uh, uh, gap here so that way it's long enough and then you bend 90 degree with that pin have it look like this yeah have it look like that and now pin one so this is my pin one of the programmer see I'm gonna make a mark so that way I can cut the next one much more precise see this way I'm gonna cut not cut to strip and I'm gonna cut it somewhere here all right and that mark so strip on that mark again same thing bend 90 degree and now you get a chamber wire okay. So pin 1 to pin 1. Yeah, make sure your wires sit flat so it won't interfere in the, the future wire. And this pin 1 now, pin number 2. So pin number 2, <coughs> it's a positive. So I have different color. I'm going to use orange one so it looks like red. same process so pin number two I'll put it here and I will go to this this is my strip and this where I cut it to the power rail. Now for the grounding. For grounding I will use the black one. Strip and bend. Okay. So now this where I gonna put it in and then this way I'm gonna strip bit hard to see now and this way I'm gonna cut So. <coughs> so 
So now I get the 5 volt, go to the positive rail here, and I get ground, go to the ground rail here. So if you look on this side, the bottom rail, they're not connecting, so we need to connect this end. So that okay, it's hard to find the mark. I think but it's here. You know, you make mistake, you can always repeat that again. So now my ground rail on this side is connected to the ground rail on the other side. Okay. And oops, it's the wrong one. So this one, my strip. This is my cut. Okay. There. Should sit flat. Now I get power on both sides. So to give the power to <laughs> microcontroller, so now according to our diagram here, so pin 32 and 11. So now this is my pin 32, this is my 11. So this one I will connect to this side and 11 connect to the other side. Okay, to speed up this, I will use the pre-cut wire. So this is a pre-cut wire, pre-strip. So it's good. It save time. So eleven is our steel rail. So the length it's not All right. Let me pick different length. Make sure you cut the right one. If you reverse polarity, you will fry the IC. So keep that in mind. And the negative, then the positive, the other side, which is pin 32. So make sure you cut that right pin 32 to the positive. Okay. And now ground. So ground is pin 31. VSS and pin 12. So pin 31. <coughs> so this is pin 31. Go to ground and 12 on this side. You see, I swap the color because that color it will give me the exact length that I want okay so now we get the power into the microcontroller and the next thing we're gonna connect the communication communication so pin number three pin number three I'm sorry a pin number four We'll go to pin number 40. Okay, so pin number 4 to 40. So this is my pin number 4. Okay, I'm going to burn it like this to make it neat. This way I'm going to strip, this way I'm going to cut. 
Virginia. Yeah. So I was just talking to Tito. So it looks like I mean, there's a possibility for an October yeah. strike. So I was kind of under the impression that we do strike would be. Okay, so now there's the programming, um, let's see, so there's the programming uh, delta uh, data, number 4, now we go to number 5 for the programming clock, so number 5 go to pin 39, so pin 39, just right beside the 40 there, okay, Alright, so it should be like this. So now we have power, positive, negative, you have programming data, you have programming clock. I think we could to go oh except our resistor. Okay, so resistor had to go between uh, line one and two, so that's why I bend it this way. So this is good, you just insert from the top because the two hold it just so close to each other. Okay, leave it like this, okay, pin 1 to pin 2, so this pin 1 will go to the reset line, and the diode, so the diode, we need to protect the circuit, especially the microcontroller, because in the case that you put the wrong polarity, and then for sure you will see the smoke, or the, the, if you damage the microcontroller, so the diode you look at it observe the polarity so the mark here this is the negative line and make sure you put that in reverse polarity that's when you put the negative to the positive and the positive to negative <coughs> so this way when you were reverse polarity what happened the positive coming here the negative here so it will burn the diode before it burn the microcontroller okay so this for the protection purpose and one other thing with the capacitor, this is good when you do the analog lab. So this one, it helps to smooth out the, the ripple of the DC voltage. Okay, again, this polarized, so this is a negative. Okay, so put negative and the positive correctly. Okay. So now you got the complete circuit. And um, what we do next, we're going to... Um, test this board see if the connection we made here uh, corrects okay so thank you okay let's continue uh, our circuit over here so this I'm gonna show you how you can check the wiring before you even put the power there okay so you need a DMM turn it to community mode and you can tighten to make sure so everything works good okay so you're gonna check one at a time so first we're gonna start at pin one so when you check you're not actually touching the wire over here you're touching the pin of the IC so that way to ensure that the continuity is all the way to the pin not to the wire okay so you're touching this okay so that's a good continuity now pin 1, this is pin 2, pin 2 is supposed to be power, so power will be pin 11, so now I'm touching the IC pin again, so I get con unity, and pin 32, okay, so everything's good, so now the ground will be pin 31, and pin 12, so everything clear, pin 4, the programming data, again, Okay, programming clock, so they're all good, they work skin good.